Whether you've been photographing real estate for many years or you're just starting out, there will come a point in time when you're gonna think, should you be using HDR? Should you be using Flambient? And that's probably from this ongoing debate that's been going on for years on using HDR or using Flambient, but it's not a binary situation. This isn't the Pepsi Coke challenge. Neither one of these techniques can do it all. And there are places for both, but it's going to depend on what genre and what area you use one more than the other when you're working in different areas of real estate photography because there's more than one. So I wanna be able to cover some of that in this video because depending on how you incorporate this, when you use it, how you use it, when to incorporate it, and to what level, and to what degree, and for what during different shoots, then that's gonna determine some of your career growth, how much money you can make. If you don't learn all the techniques, if you're not applying them appropriately, you're leaving money on the table. Now, as you probably know from a lot of my other videos, I've shot literally thousands of homes over the years. I've worked with hundreds of agents. I've seen just about everything you could shake a stick at when it comes to real estate photography, and I work across a broad area of markets in real estate photography as well. Now, I do shoot primarily flambient, but there are cases and there are times when I use high-end HDR. And in the beginning of my career, this was different. And those are things I wanna talk about here because this will vary as you progress through your career. But as you know, I teach the Flambient technique primarily. Now I do cover the high-end HDR also in my courses, like the course on expert editing. But if I were to teach you just HDR or teach you just Flambient, then I would be doing a disservice. By teaching you how to incorporate flash and why I concentrate on that so much is so that you can learn one of the more difficult areas of real estate photography that can get you literally a lot more bang for your buck. It can penetrate you into these various different markets. But if you don't learn HDR also along the way and do high-end HDR, once again, you're gonna be leaving money on the table because there are appropriate times to do that and for good reason as well. But when we take a look at why I teach then the Flambient, well, I cover a lot of that in my Pro Interiors course. And it's important to know how to use it. It is a little bit more difficult, but once you get it down, it really gets some great results. And also then in my expert editing course, besides just covering all kinds of editing around Flambient, I do cover the high-end HDR. And in my Pro Exteriors course, I show methods that don't use flash, but they are better than just common HDR. So if you are stuck just on doing HDR or you're stuck on just doing Flambient, then you're holding yourself back from various genres of photography within the real estate markets. And that's something you shouldn't do because once again, leaving money on the table will hold you back in your career. And of course, by the way, if you're not familiar with any of my courses or my books on real estate photography, I have links to all that down in the description for this video. So in this video, I wanna cover two main topics. The first are the markets that would be applying HDR or Flambient and also to what degree each one would and also at different times throughout your career. And then after covering that, I wanna talk about some of the technical issues to consider with HDR and Flambient. Some of them you've probably heard about, but I'll bet you there's a lot that you haven't and why certain areas and certain markets would prefer to use one or the other. So this chart shows typical percentages I've seen, not just from my work, but numerous photographers I work with and that I've trained. And we can see here that there are subgenres of real estate markets down here. There are six here that I've identified. And when we think about real estate photography, we tend to think of what's over here on the far left, which is just your average listing market. And this is where everybody starts out. The pay shown here in green is typically fairly low compared to everything else, which is why in red over here, a lot of it's done using HDR out there in the market, and then less of it's usually done with Flambient. But this is first year stuff. This is when you're first starting out. If you wanted to keep doing just average listings for your entire career, then this is where you're gonna stay. And you're really not gonna progress. And if you use just HDR here, then you're probably not gonna be able to get some of these other gigs if you at least don't learn how to use Flambient and when to use it appropriately. For instance, 
not all these markets use entirely Flambian. Notice how I've identified here in red kind of a percentage of where you would still be using HDR, even for designers and even for architecture, and a lot really for commercial spaces. So commercial spaces typically don't pay really all that much more. Um, they tend to be more than your average listing because it's usually charged by the hour. And even in the luxury market, even though that pays more typically than it would for your average listings, the HDR portion of it is still done by a lot of photographers because a lot of agents that are getting these luxury gigs, they might not know the difference, but the discriminating ones and the ones that do pay higher, and this is key, that's where you're gonna be using Flambian. So if you do wanna make more in the luxury market and you wanna attract then the higher paying clients and those are gonna expect high level results and that's where you're gonna be incorporating Flash using Flambient. But commercial real estate's a lot different. For one, a lot of times the spaces are just too big. You just, there's no need to actually start incorporating flash and all they're doing a lot of times is shooting, here's a bunch of empty office space or here's some uh, empty warehouses or sometimes just the outside of buildings, but they are paid by the hour gig. And so because of that, they do tend to pay more. But look here, there's still a mix of 50-50 here because sometimes there are office spaces for commercial real estate that will want to incorporate some type of flash. But on the right half over here, we can see some high paying markets and that's for designers and builders and architecture. And when you're working with interior designers, most of the time, yes, it will pay very well because they will have high expectations and you do need to take your time using the Flambian technique, but you're also doing it by the hour. So I've run across most of my interior designer clients that I have They've been so dissatisfied with other photographers because they just looked for a real estate photographer. It was someone using HDR who was used to being in the average listing market. That's where they dominated. They didn't have experience with using flash. And so they never really went back and used them again. That's how I get my designer clients. And builders also have quite a mix because sometimes there's progress work that needs to be done. There's no time for flash and there's no need to when drywall and stick work and all that's up. You know, when it's finished, that's different. And yes, they will expect high quality, magazine quality images, and that's where Flamin comes in. And once again, these pay very well. And architecture is a very unique animal because sometimes architecture is in huge, large spaces. And a lot of times that means, yes, you would incorporate some HDR, but you'd also incorporate flash. Once again, these pay high. But the point of this is, for one, this is typically when people have progressed through their career, not just starting out. This is where a lot of it started out, but how did it start out with me? Well, it wasn't always this way. Right now, today, if we take a look at what I do, we can see that I do a fair amount of average listing. Most of my income though comes from either luxury and also designers, builders, and architects, and some from commercial. But I was able to move out of average listings to then in these other high paying areas because as you can see by the blue, I'm using a lot of Flambient throughout my shoots. Notice also here commercial, I'm using more HDR than I am Flambient. Once again, that's because commercial spaces tend to be very large and the expectations are just so-so. But when it comes to designers, no HDR at all. That's entirely Flambient. Builders and architecture, it depends on the space and of course if it calls for it. But this is today. When I first started out many years ago, I didn't have commercial clients. I didn't have designers. I started getting into builders and a little bit into architecture, but I was really concentrated on listings. And I wasn't always a flambient shooter. I don't think anybody starts out that way. But I had started with HDR and found that I just couldn't get good enough results. Sure, I could outsource my editing, but then I lose all control of what I'm doing. And if you've ever followed any Facebook groups, you know the most common posts are, where can I find a new editor? Mine isn't doing so well anymore. So there's always that issue. That's a little off topic. But the fact is, is I was able to take this 
from where I was and start incorporating Flambient every place I could. And then eventually, like today, I am dominating with Flambient, but that's because I'm able to get out of just doing average listings. I'm able to do more luxury work, a little bit of commercial work, and a lot more work for designers, builders, and architects. But if I had just stayed within the average listing market, I wouldn't have been able to penetrate these other markets. But what took me from those beginning days where I wasn't really penetrating other markets and I was mostly just on the listing market, two things happened. One, I got better at Flambient. So I started applying it everywhere I could to practice, 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 practice. And that then started excelling my career and I was able to penetrate other markets. As I did that and I learned that skill set on using Flambient, it allowed me to then see when should I use HDR or when would I recommend HDR. And that of course then led me to the high-end HDR technique that I teach and I've shown in other videos and touched on it before as well. But it was that progression that finally led to where I am now and it still today is not a binary decision of one or the other. Yes, predominantly nowadays, I do use more Flambient than HDR, and if I do use HDR, it's in select cases and certain select markets, and it's also the high-end HDR technique. And because of that, nowadays, my marketing budget is zero. It's been that way for years. I don't need to advertise because I get referrals, and that is huge in the real estate business. So if you're doing weddings or portraits, stuff like that, it's one-off, but when you start working for businesses doing real estate photography, different agents and different companies, then you get repeat business and they're the ones that can also refer you to other companies and other long lasting multi gig type of clients. But the quality is something that is very important here we need to talk about because it's too often overgeneralized. One, yes, Flambient will get you a higher quality image. It can be argued that just about any HDR photographer can get a really good picture, but a lot of times the editing effort is so much higher to be able to do that that they'll actually outsource their editing. The thing is, when you're using Flash, you immediately get two big things. You get correct color. You don't have to really worry about color casts. Very few color casts have to worry about if you do get them at all. And the other thing is flashed light is sharper. It's something that I talk about in my book, Mastering Flambient, and also my book on mastering color in photography, is that when you talk about ambient light, and if that's all you're using, ambient light for doing HDR, ambient light is so highly diffused that it is super soft. Where flashed light, even though you diffuse it for doing interior real estate photography, it's not diffused to the extent that sunlight going through windows and bouncing off everything would be. So yes, you do get a higher quality image. But then there's the time factor, and that's the other big argument that comes into play. That yes, if I'm doing HDR, then I could be in and out of a house in 30 minutes, and then on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. But then the editing becomes a lot more cumbersome. So yes, a little bit more time on site doing flambient, and then you have less time editing, or you put very little time on site with HDR, but you could have a lot of time then in the editing process. And this is why I've mentioned before that a lot of HDR photographers will just outsource to overseas editors their work because it's just too cumbersome, it's very difficult. So a lot of times you'll see online photos that are shared and they say, look at what I did with HDR. And that's great, but they probably didn't edit those photos themselves. I know from experience, doing HDR that sometimes photos can take a very long time to get very professional results. Then there's the argument too that quality doesn't count. Well, doesn't it count when it comes to real estate photography? Once again, that's overgeneralized because as I just showed earlier, there's many different submarkets. There's many different genres within just real estate photography itself. And there are clients that will want quality, not just for the designers and builders or whatnot, but we're also talking in the luxury market and even some of the standard average listing market as well. And also that time on site, well, that's actually deceiving because that's when you first try doing anything new. So HDR is gonna be super simple. I could teach a fifth grader to do it. It's simple, you just go in, you set everything to auto, you do a bracket, boom, you move on to the next shot. I mean, that's not hard. 
But when you do any type of pro level work and you're incorporating flash, yes, it will take you a while to learn it, to practice it, and to refine it. But once you do, your time is greatly reduced to where it won't take nearly as much time on site than it did when you first started out. So you have to think along the terms of what's my long game? Where do I want to be in my career five years from now, 10 years from now? Is it worth it for me to then learn a pro technique that I can then incorporate? And sure, for a listing, it may not pay that much more. It usually does doing higher quality work because you can demand more work. But when it comes to designers and to builders and people that will really be discriminating, those are high paying gigs, especially architectural photography. And if you're incorporating some type of flash in there, and you're getting paid by the hour, they expect these pro results, but if you don't know how to do that, you'll never get those gigs. Which is why it's so important to know both. There's no way that I'm gonna show up to a warehouse and then be shooting flash. There's no way that in very large buildings, if for even corporate centers, that I'm gonna be shooting their lobbies and whatnot with all flash. Sometimes there might be some incorporated with it, but not always. These are tools that you need to learn. And the more you learn, then the more diverse you can become. And the more diverse you can become, the more you can advance your career. So remember this. Those who cannot change their mind cannot change anything. Be open to new techniques. If you're only doing flambient, learn some high-end HDR. If you're only doing HDR, think about high-end HDR and also flambient. The more you know, the more you can learn, the more you can learn, the more clients you can get, and that then doesn't leave money on the table. It puts it in your pocket.